Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Eveli Lepametz. I'm from Nastec Tallinn and welcome you today on Coopbank's Investor Conference webinar. The webinar will be hosted by board members of Coopbank, Hans Bajama and Gerli Lohmus, who will introduce the bank's strategic goals and the initial public offering of the shares of Coopbank. During the webinar, all attendees can ask questions. If you have questions to Coopbank, please send them in using the question box on the right side of the screen. Right after the presentation, we will give the floor for questions. Now we are ready to start. So, Gerli and Hans, please go ahead. The floor is yours. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Hans Pajoma. Good afternoon. My name is Gerli Lühmus. Yes, and uh, welcome every everybody and uh, all potential investors of Coop Bank. So um, during next uh, 30 to 40 minutes, we would like to go through the slides and give you the overview of the bank uh, development so far and the potential uh, potential prognosis for the future. So here I start. So um, first of all, disclaimer. Uh, don't know why do I have to go that through. But uh, but hopefully uh, hopefully you can read while I uh, kind of uh, give you background noise. I don't have to go it through. Uh, I don't go it through uh, word by word. So let's start with the with the presentation. The presentation is divided in three parts. Uh, it starts with the results from uh, 2017 till uh, 2019 nine months, then strategy and targets for next three years. And then the initial public offering of the shares. So this is more detailed overview about the technicalities of the IPO. But let's start with our um, uh, recent history. We started at Coop Bank under uh, under its current name started in 2017, when uh, when the current uh, shareholders uh, acquired the bank. Our starting portfolio. Uh, at the end of 2016 was 153 million euros. Over this uh, two and a half, for let's say the two years and nine months, the load portfolio has increased uh, three times. When we started, then the focus was, and then the main income from the from the credit business came mainly from uh, mortgage lending. So it was nearly 100 million euros. Then there was a smaller part of corporate loans, or actually, to be more precise, uh, loans to the SMEs. And then a uh, small part of it was then, in addition, uh, was uh, consumer loans and leasing. 2017, when we started uh, our new bank, then the focus was to uh, unfreeze the, the, the existing bank and to become more active on the market. Uh, since then, we have been uh, actively approaching to the clients and been open for the for the new potential uh, cooperations with the clients. Uh, thus, the, the loan portfolio has started to increase uh, from the year one, and the uh, average growth of the portfolio has been 44%. When we look at the loan portfolio um, at the end of uh, September, then uh, you can see the big difference compared to the 2016. When, uh, when 2016, the main risk was, and then the main income was uh, from the housing loans, then as of today, the portfolio is much more diversified. The, the private individuals and housing loans portfolio is still the largest, but the uh, loans to the SMEs has increased uh, substantially, and the second is, is right now uh, clearly the second largest portfolio, and then and, and, and the growth is continuing. Um, our consumer uh, lending portfolio have, uh, has increased as well uh, from 13 million to 56 million euros. Here I have to uh, bring out one detail uh, also that uh, in 2016 uh, the consumer financing portfolio was um, only partly booked in our portfolio because then it was subsidiary of the bank. Uh, let's say that. Um, not fully on subsidiary of the bank and then so we booked only half of the portfolio so uh, 2017 uh, the portfolio of the consumer or, or yeah the consumer loans is fully fully uh, booked under the bank 
balance sheet and then, and then and from that point going on uh, there has been only organic growth uh, organically has uh, has grown also leasing portfolio so we haven't acquired any portfolio or anything like that so it's been only organic growth and yes, uh, you double confirmed that that uh, over the two and two years and nine months, the portfolio has been growing really fast. And then in all four financing segments, we are actively in. When we look at the, the chart on the right side of the of the presentation, which shows the uh, our deposits. Then here you can see the development as well. The deposit portfolio hasn't developed three times, but two times. But the reason for the kind of slower growth is uh, caused uh, by the fact that uh, the loan, uh, the deposit portfolio was just higher uh, from the starting point. Um, what I have to point out here is that. Um, there has been some structural changes in the deposit portfolio over these uh, over these years when we have been active. Uh, in 2016, uh, the amount deposits were taking took the largest part of the overall deposit portfolio, and only 113 millions were uh, term deposits. Um, 2017 the demand deposits increased but since then they have been dropping and the reason behind the drop is that uh, the gold bank or the, the predecessor of the gold bank Bank, was owned by the russian uh, russian shareholders and uh, the bank had kind of substantial part of uh, non-resident deposits and in 2017 uh, 18 with uh, we made the decision to exit fully from that client segment. And since then, the demand deposit portfolio has dropped significantly. In absolute numbers, the portfolio dropped around 100 million, of, 100 million euros, plus minus. And we have replaced these demand deposits with the local demand deposits. But of course, the, 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 the growth of the local demand deposits hasn't been that fast to cover the gap. Instead, we have covered uh, the funding cap with term deposits, and uh, these term deposits have divided also in two parts. Uh, one part is uh, from the from the local clients, and altern alternatively, we are taking deposits from uh, German uh, retail market uh, via the internet platform called Rising. So and when we look at the loan portfolio in general, so then uh, then end of uh, end of September, the term deposit portfolio is uh, 349 million euros. Out of that uh, deposits from yeah, out of that the, the the deposits from the Germany or the rising platform are uh, 120 million euros. And um, and we see the, the the German deposit market as a really good buffer source for us to finance our loan growth. And in general, we are financing uh, our loans. Let's say 90% uh, deposits, uh, then some part from the own equity, and then we have a minor part or also some sub, uh, subordinated loans from uh, from different uh, sources and investment funds. Okay, uh, let's move further on. As said uh, before, our uh, business volumes uh, on the credit side have increased uh, three times, deposits two times. <clears throat> when you look at the profit, then we can say that by the end of this year, our profit has increased also around three times. When we started, then our starting profit from the last, uh, from the year 2016 was 1.7 million euros. Since then, the profit has increased every year. The only, let's say that, uh, not only, but uh, but the year 2017, the, the let's say that the jump from 1.7 to 4.5 is extraordinary. 
out of this 4.5, there is 2.9 million euros extraordinary profit from the sales of the real estate. And the story behind this extraordinary uh, real estate um, exit is that, um, that the, the Credit Bank, the predecessor of Coop Bank, owned a substantial amount of real estate, the own head office, the bank branches, etc. So when we took over the bank, uh, we made strategic decision that we're not involved uh, we're not invo involved anymore in uh, in property business and and uh, based on that decision we we sold all the properties and the profit we uh, we received from these transactions we uh, injected that to the bank equity so that helped us to to uh, continue our growth uh, now on the right slide uh, return on the equity Again, development has been very positive. Uh, it looks a little bit flat starting from 2017, but again, we should take the starting point from 2016 when the return on equity was 5.3%. And uh, this extraordinary high return on equity compared to the, la uh, the, the rest of the years is uh, high only because of this extraordinary income from uh, real estate. Uh, profit. Other, otherwise, uh, the return on equity would have been uh, far below 10%. And the progress has been then 5.3, then would have been below 10, and uh, 2018, it's, it was 10%. And as this year is not over, it's hard to forecast uh, what the return on equity would be. And, and, and probably we don't get the uh, the, the truth out of it, because if the IPO will be successful, then the, then this uh, return on equity calculations do not match anymore. Okay, let's move further on. Um, our um, loan portfolio has increased and deposits and, uh, have increased as well. Uh, what does it make on the market? So uh, the in overall banking market, the co bank is still really small participant. When we started our loan portfolio market share was under 1%. Our deposit portfolio market share was slightly above 1%. But over these two and uh, nine two years and nine months, we have uh, nice to say it, but we have doubled the market share. Although Despite of that, our share on the market is still small. It's, it's just 2%. But on the other hand, the progress is really positive. And, and, uh, and as we see, then, and then we see even more the potential to increase the market share. And why do we believe that? Um, the proof point is uh, on the right side, the number of uh, new clients. We started the bank, then we had 31,000 clients. Every year we have gained more clients. And when you look at the development over the years, then the speed of uh, inflow of new clients have increased actually remarkably. So when uh, 2007, we, we, we got only 5,000 new clients. Then a year later, we got 9,000 uh, new clients. And by now we have uh, already, with nine months, we have uh, of 11,000 clients have found way to our bank. And then, and, and of course, uh, we can say that over the last few months, the, the inflow of new clients, both retail and, 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 and corporate clients, has increased significantly. And then, why it is increasing? We, we call it the snowball effect. When we started, we had a small number of clients, and then uh, we wasn't that visible on the market. Nowadays, we are really active on the market. We're doing strong marketing uh, to show our, our visibility. We have active sales teams on the, out on the field, and, uh, and that brings new clients. On top of that, every new client, as we see, attracts more new clients. And, and, and the more retail clients we have, the more corporate clients are interested about uh, opening accounts in our, in our bank in order to uh, allow their clients to pay via Coop Bank. 
so uh, so the progress has been really positive and we're really proud of about this process so far next slide is about our brand awareness uh, when uh, if you remember then in last slide our market share in in, in deposits and loans were only two percent then our brand awareness is way bigger than our real market share. Fifty percent of the clients, when you are not clients, uh, fifty percent of the Estonian um, citizens or the people living in Estonia, when you ask uh, ask from them which banks do you know, the fifty percent of them know instantly that Coop Bank is one among five universal banks. And uh, three percent of the clients or the persons uh, named Coop Bank as the as the number one bank. And why this is important? This is not yet the real business in our hands, but that shows the potential. So all these clients, they know the they know our name. They know that we are existing, that we are we are actively in the universal banking industry. And this is the potential for us to attract new clients and to grow our business further on. So, uh, yeah, uh, we are proud about this friend awareness as well. And of course, uh, we get really strong support from our uh, strategic shareholder, um, Coop Retail Chain, which is present in, in, in uh, almost every angle of Estonia and, and, and that actually brings like, a client's mentality uh, kind of uh, trust and, and reliability. Okay, as I mentioned that our strategic shareholder Coop is helping us to gain market share and, and, and to, to get new business. When we look at the uh, the breakdown of the investors, then 36% uh, of investors or, or the, the shares are owned by the Coop investment. That is a subsidiary of the Coop Central uh, Cooperative, which is a special purpose vehicle to invest into Coop Bank. In addition to the Coop investment, there are 24% uh, of uh, shares belonging to the different uh, Coop regional units. This is uh, 10 out of them, yeah. 10 uh, Coop uh, cooperatives have directly invested to, to Coop Bank. Although they are separate legal entities, we consider them as the, as the one Coop group and their, their decision-making process functions as well as the one, one consolidated group. So there are some some uh, minor uh, flexibility what the local uh, cooperatives can do, but in general, all the decisions are made uh, on, on the consensus base and, and in in COP uh, supervisor board. Second largest uh, largest uh, shareholder is a private individual called Andres Sön, who entered to the bank uh, shareholding. Um, 2017, when the bank was acquired from the from the previous shareholders, and Andres Soin was purely financial investor and is currently a financial investor, and he is aiming to exit uh, from the bank shareholding uh, during the IPO. CM Capital is the second largest financial investor, owning 9.9% of bank shares. And they uh, joined the bank shareholding, uh, let's say, two months ago, approximately, if I'm not mistaken. And they are actually acquired their shares from Andresoin and InBank. InBank is the third largest, uh, or let's say, that not largest, but uh, one of the critical financial investors. And InBank, together with Andresoin, are both planning to exit uh, from our shareholding during the IPO. We used to capital, <clears throat> having 5% of bank shares, is a successor of um, 
Tallinn uh, City Municipality initiative a few years ago when Tallinn uh, City Municipality intended to establish their own bank called Cooperative Bank. But for some reasons uh, that, uh, that didn't take place and it didn't happen. And instead of uh, establishing, uh, establishing their own bank, they invested uh, some of their uh, capital in Coop Bank. And now we can say that uh, approximately 5% of our shares belong to Tallinn city. And then the rest of the shareholding belongs to the smaller uh, shareholders. Uh, and these are divided between a uh, number of uh, different uh, individuals. Okay. Moving forward, uh, we've been growing pretty fast, uh, and uh, and and that growth has given us confidence to to look further with even stronger optimism. And we have uh, worked out our uh, next three-year uh, strategy, which is uh, based on two main areas. One is to build up the strong technology uh, IT techno technological platform to integrate uh, third party service providers to us and to connect us to third party service providers. And secondly, to build up our loan portfolio. Um, how, do we, how do we reach these targets? Our strategic po positioning is brought out on this slide. This part of our DNA, uh, we strive for, for the customers. In order to be successful on the market, we have to be really proactive. We have to go the extra mile in order to get the clients. Is it private client? Is it corporate client? Is it a loan or leasing? It doesn't matter. Or daily banking clients. So we have to be really flexible and, 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 and proactive with clients. We dare to do things differently. There's no need to build up another bank, a sweat bank or SCB on the market. So in order to be successful, we have to be different. We have the evidence that we're different. So we have the only unique positioning and, 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 and um, synergy together with Scope uh, retail chain, which is the largest retail chain in Estonia. But we strive to do even more things differently, not only with Scope, but also with leasing business, et cetera, et cetera. Our main services uh, are daily banking and financing. We don't, we don't have investment business line. We don't have pension funds. We have really a basic banking setup, and that's on purpose. Uh, we have the basic universal banking setup without pension funds and then the investment products. But we uh, we are open, and, and that's the part of the strategy that we are building up the technology technological platform in order to integrate third party products and services to our our banking systems and to offer these to our clients. The first example is uh, insurance broker uh, service, which we plan to launch uh, during next uh, following weeks. We're a local Estonian bank. Uh, uh, what do we mean by that? It means that our decisions are make, made here in Estonia. It doesn't mean that we have only Estonian shareholders. Uh, it means that our head office is in Estonia, in Tallinn, we are fast on decisions. Everything we, we think it, it, it is important to do that we can uh, decide and, 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 and to do. And of course, integration of banking and retail. So that is the cornerstone of our banking business. And now about the targets. Based on our, uh, our development so far, based on the overall uh, situation on the banking market, we feel confident that by the end of 2022, we have more than 100,000 clients. By the end of September, we had 56,000 uh, clients. But as I said before, the speed of, uh, speed of uh, inflow of new clients has increased significantly. And we feel pretty confident that this 100,000 new clients are onboarded, uh, will be onboarded by the end of 2022. With the number, uh, with the growth of uh, new clients, we plan to build up also sig significantly bigger loan portfolio than we have today. End of September, our, our loan portfolio was uh, 418 million euros. 
end of October, the portfolio was already 425 million euros. Um, in order to reach the 100, uh, 1 billion uh, euro loan portfolio means that our growth rate must be faster than it has been so far. But we're confident that we're able to uh, achieve this stronger growth. Now, this is based on a few things. The main, main thing is that we're more visible, more known uh, on the market, uh, banking market than before. And that has brought a lot of new applications, uh, both on the private individual side, in leasing side, in consumer financing side, but also in corporate banking side. One thing is our visibility, our, uh, our proactiveness on the market. On the other hand, on the Estonian banking market, there has been significant changes. A lot of, not a lot of, but some of the Scandinavian banks have left or have decided to leave Estonian market, which has left the hole on the banking market, which means that clients have less opportunity to find a uh, uh, banking partner for themselves. That brings and helps to uh, helps us to uh, find clients easy, more easily. And secondly, the pricing on the banking market has increased due to the smaller competition. Uh, and then and due to that, we, we, we're quite confident that we can uh, achieve this 1 billion euro <clears throat> loan growth. Plus, of course, again, I should mention it once again, the synergy with the co-op uh, chain is not 100% utilized and we see the big potential also in the financing side. We cannot uh, finance Scope as, the, as our shareholder directly, but they have uh, suppliers and business partners whom we can have a really nice and solid banking business. Okay, uh, after we have reached our uh, client numbers and loan portfolio, we are uh, confident that our cost income ratio and return on equity will improve. The cost income ratio has dropped already by now. And it actually theoretically could drop even more, but it has been strategic decision that we don't, uh, we don't run after the efficiency right from the day one. And we don't uh, run for the full efficiency from the day one is calculated decision uh, because we need to build up the bank organization and then and, and systems in order to take the next step and to build up the portfolio and then and, and to become the really like the substantial player on the market and uh, and, and therefore we have created our um, critical cost base going forward and this cost base was critical in order to raise more capital and to take the next step in the business volumes. And uh, yeah, uh, when our eff efficiency improves, then also the return on equity is improving. Currently, we are around 10%, uh, but uh, by the end of 2022, we're quite confident that 15% of uh, return on equity is doable at least. Yes, I don't have anything more to mention here. If you have later questions, uh, feel free to ask. When I showed you the slide about our loan portfolio development so far and deposit uh, portfolio development so far, then uh, I mentioned that, uh, and you saw on this presentation, that a big part of our deposits uh, were term deposits. In one hand, term deposits help us to uh, fill the gap and to get uh, fast funding in order to finance our loan growth. On the other hand, term deposits are more expensive source of funding compared to the demand deposits. And uh, that's why this 100,000 clients is the critical target for us, because these are the clients who help us to reduce the cost of funds. So, uh, that means that the more clients we have, the more, the more these clients uh, start using our bank as the daily, daily bank for the daily transactions. And then 
by this development, we foresee that our cost of funds will uh, reduce about 30 pips. Or let's say that over the three years, we see that, that the spread between uh, funding cost and uh, loan portfolio will improve by 30 pips. Yes, let's move further, uh, further on. Initial public offering of the shares. In order to, um, to achieve all these uh, results, the, the client, number, client numbers is not that much, but the loan portfolio and the profitability, then uh, it's not enough for us to, uh, to build that portfolio only based on the retained, retained earnings. We need fresh capital. And, and uh, this is really precise calculation. And then according to this very price, uh, precise calculation, we need 37 million euros uh, in new capital to, uh, to go till the end of 2022. And uh, in the number of shares, it makes uh, around 32.2 million shares. But the exact number of shares will it will change slightly depends on the price of the of the final final offering let's say okay let's move further on uh, more precise terms we go uh, we go on public uh, offering in estonia latvia and lithuania and uh, for institutional offering we expand uh, the offering area throughout European economic area. Uh, we don't we don't go to Asia or America, but but uh, everything in Europe is is is, is in our focus. Uh, we uh, we issue uh, up to forty six million forty six million uh, shares combined, out of which thirty two million shares are the new shares. And 14 million shares will be uh, connected to the investors uh, who are exiting. So this will be basically refinancing of, uh, of existing uh, investors. Um, the price range and offering. Uh, we have set the price range between 1.15 to 1.3 uh, euros per share in the institutional offering. Uh, for the public offering, the price is 1.3 euro, uh, but the real price range depends on the, on the institutional offers. And then if the, uh, the private individuals have placed their orders in the system, and if the pricing is uh, lower than 1.3, then the, the private clients or the, the, yeah, the, the public offering clients, they get the, the shares with the lower price correctly. Yes, exactly. Offering started today. Uh, not sure if it's already fully booked or not, uh, but very close maybe. Uh, and it will last till 29th of November uh, till uh, 3.30. Uh, what else? Uh, subscriptions. Institutional offers uh, throughout book building. Uh, so here I read only what's written uh, in the text. Uh, any local or foreign uh, custodian bank or broker can be used, which is set up, uh, which means that um, our bank is not the member of the, we don't have the, the securities accounts. So you can uh, book or buy our shares via all the banks who has the, the securities accounts and, and who are active, uh, active in the investment banking area. Pricing and settlement, um, uh, the final pricing and allocation uh, will, be, will be set on the 2nd of uh, December. And Kelly, maybe you can explain what this second, this pricing uh, on the T2 plus TDP. Delivery versus payment is this uh, short, uh, but uh, yeah, money transferring will be uh, probably on the 4th of December. Mm -hmm. So listing and trading uh, expected free float, about 50% of shares. Assuming all the offers, uh, all offer shares are sold, 
And the uh, first day of trading is expected to be Nasdaq Baltic uh, main list about kind of on the on the 9th of December. I don't know. As I understand, there might be some uh, some uh, kind of delays or. If settlement goes uh, smoothly, then uh, we project that the ninth is the first day of trading. Yeah. And last is uh, lockup and stabilization. Uh, all the shareholders who has more than one percent of shares, uh, they have signed the lockup uh, agreements, which means that uh, during 180 days they cannot sell their shares. Uh, the longer lockup is uh, until uh, 30, kind of end of October 2020 is for the Coop investments and the Coop unions because they are the largest shareholders and, and, uh, and they don't have also actually the plan to sell but for, uh, for the sake uh, we have signed that agreement with them. Stabilization period is 30 days from the first day of trading and uh, over allotment, the so-called green shoe is uh, for 15% of base offer. So I don't go to the detail of this uh, number of the shares. Price range, uh, Kelly, maybe you can tell more about this price range. Yeah, well, actually, uh, LHV analyst has uh, done some research and calculations about uh, valuation of our bank and also the price to book ratio and uh, ROE targets. So here on the screen, you can see the results and uh, calculated with the hour offering mid range uh, price, uh, the price to book valuation would be post IPO 1.19, which is uh, comparable to other banks, uh, which are brought out in this uh, list. And uh, the closest pair, pair to us is considered to be LHV Bank. And as you can see, LHV is a uh, price to book ratio 2.0. So we have a uh, 40% discount compared to LHV as our, our bank is uh, somewhat different also. And then this is uh, reasonable. Uh, our goal is 15% uh, uh, return on equity. So uh, considering this target, uh, price to book ratio should move towards uh, 1.5 times. Mm -hmm. Yes, and um, our story is that, uh, that our bank is uh, is growing bank and then we are selling the, the, the growth story. And uh, as I said before, that we've been growing really fast so far. And then as I explained before also, that we believe that this growth can uh, continue and then the developments on the banking market in general in Estonia, they're, they're working in favor of us. Also the negative interest rate environment in Europe and in Estonia in general is working in our favor as well. Because as you remember from the deposit slide and our funding cost, then, uh, then our funding cost is compared to the deposit overall price range is, is, is very expensive. And then and, and we can say that, that the more negative the interest rate goes in the, kind of on the European level, the better it is for us, the more clients will find the way to our bank. And yeah, so uh, these discounts and, and, and the bear-to-bear -bear analysis uh, Gerli already described. Uh, allocation rules. Um, for all subscribers in public offering, up to 2,500 shares uh, should be, so to say, guaranteed. In order to you uh, you avoid the situation which was uh, which was in Tallinn Tallinn uh, port uh, IPO, then we encourage private or the, the the retail investors to sign up and subscribe during the first week. With that, we try to guarantee them 5,000 shares. And, uh, and private or the investors who has the bank account in Coop Bank, to them we would like to guarantee up to one, uh, up to ten thousand uh, shares. And uh, all subscriptions uh, bigger than one hundred thousand are considered as the institutional offering. 
but of course uh, the bottom you can find that uh, depends on the offering and, and, and uh, how popular the share and the IPO will be the allocation rules is our right to change so uh, so this is our uh, really strong will to do it as it is written here but, uh, but we leave the freedom to change it slightly um, important dates uh the subscription started uh, today uh end of uh, first week allocation priority will end 22nd november at uh, four o'clock 16.00 then uh, 29th of november at three o'clock uh, ends the cop and customer allocation priority and uh, 30 minutes later at the same time uh, same day ends the subscription period uh, 2nd of december uh, ipo ipo results allocations and final price and then as i said before the 9th of december is ex to be the expected uh, go live on the market and uh, information and detailed information and the the prospectus are available uh, in our web page copbank.ee uh, slash pakkumine or uh, on the web page of FSA. So uh, if you have more detailed need for the information, then you can find all the information from the web page. And yes, that was it, the presentation. Uh, so now if you have questions, then we're ready to answer. Thank you for the presentation. At the moment, we have no questions. So, dear audience, we have a couple of minutes left. Left. So, if you still have some questions, please send them right away. Okay, seems that we have no questions today. So, Kerli Lõhmus and Hans Payama, thank you for the presentation. Dear participant, thank you for joining and have a nice weekend. Oh, sorry, have a nice evening. Yes, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, goodbye.